Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here today. And I'm going to be speaking on the global challenges and opportunities for Indian cotton. So these days, when people ask me, what's your view on the cotton market? And where are cotton prices going to head? I do something very simple. I just run away. We have a lot of macroeconomic uncertainty, and world cotton prices, supply and demand, is stuck in the middle. As we look at the global factors, global growth in 2018 is close to post-crisis high. Global expansion is weakening. IMF projects global growth at 3.5% in 2019. U.S. expansion continues. Forecast remains for deceleration and unwinding of fiscal stimulus. Advanced economies foresee a growth of 2% in 2019. Risks for downward corrections rising, led by trade tensions, tightening financial conditions, trade and investment slowing, does not mean we are still staring at a major downturn. Downward forecasts mainly due to Euro area adding headwinds to growth. The Brexit cliffhanger still continues. Emerging economies, growth projected at 4.5% in 2019. Headwinds from weaker capital flows following higher US policy rates and exchange rates depreciations. Although in the recent months, this have become less extreme. China's growth slowdown could be faster if trade tensions continue, can trigger abrupt sell-off in financial and commodity markets. Let's now look at the India macroeconomic factors. Well, we are still the world's fastest growing economy, but growth is slowing. Tight financial conditions acerbated by continuing effects of demonetization and GST bottlenecks. Tight credit con conditions constraining economic growth and straining balance sheets. Lower inflation expectations likely to lead to lower interest rates. National elections are around the corner. That's the key to policy stability and much needed reforms. Crude, a very important factor for India, any price increase is detrimental to growth and currency stability. Weakening global flows is also a matter of concern. Normal monsoons critical for India for agriculture growth, domestic consumption, and lower inflation. Much needed policy boost required for job growth in the manufacturing sector. Here is a slide showing the global fiber situation. I'm not going to get into facts and figures here, but all of us in this room know it's really been a brawl. Cotton against cotton, cotton against synthetics, synthetics against textiles. But if you look at India's fiber consumption, over the last four and a half decades, we have seen a significant rise in cotton consumption. And that trend continues. Although in the period 2010 to 2017, we have seen polyester fast catching up. And this trend is expected to continue. Of the 11 million tons of fiber consumption, estimate 5.6 million tons is cotton, 4.8 million tons is polyester, and the rest is divided amongst other fibers. And here is a slide showing the percentage share of the fiber consumptions in India, more related to the previous slide. So, so in 2017, we are estimating of a percentage share of 51% on cotton, 43% on polyester, and the rest on other fibers. So let's go a bit into the reasoning. 
So although cotton percentage share is better, but man-made is fast rising. In absolute terms, cotton consumption increasing, but its share in the total fiber filament basket is declining. Of course, happily, cotton has done much better over the past year. Cotton increasingly facing competition from artificial fibers, notably polyester. Viscose fiber capacities also increasing. We are seeing continued breakthroughs in man-made fiber performance with little or no response from cotton. Prices of man-made fibers have been relatively less volatile than cotton. Productivity of manufacturing units, I am told, is higher when man-made fibers are blended with cotton. Easy and adequate availability of man-made fiber all year round. Let's now look at this slide showing the country-wise yield comparisons. And unfortunately, it doesn't paint a pretty picture for India. If you see over the last 13 years, you've seen majority of the yield increases come from China, Australia, and Brazil. The United States has been fairly stable. But if you look at the graph on India, unfortunately, the trend over the recent years is showing a reduction in yields. So clearly, cotton yields are struggling. And although we did see some increases over the last decade, but the long-term trend is worrisome. We are still way below the world average. We can blame the weather or intercrop competition, but assigning the blame misses the point. We need to identify what's going on in the farm. So we have a predominance of a rain-fed area, which is a major hindrance. Almost 60% of the area is rain-fed, exposing productivity to monsoon vagaries. We have lack of irrigation facilities, but on the optimistic side, there's tremendous scope to increase. High-density planting system is needed to achieve higher yields. And most importantly, we are at a stage where we need better seeds to address both the quality and yield. Joint efforts and research involving private and public sector needed to find a quick solution. This will enable us to meet the current demand and address demand growth for the future value chain. So, we all know that the Indian bale sells and will continue to sell. But it's good to see the mirror sometimes and there are some concerns. First, let's look at the positives. So we all know Indian cotton's hand-picked, the spinning value is better due to manual, manual harvesting, gentle processing, minimizes damage to the fiber. We have a lot less short fibers and nep formation. It's rollagen cotton. We are the only country producing all kinds of cotton from all counts. We've seen some improvement in the ginning process, some improvement in the contamination levels. And yes, India has a great geographical proximity to all destination markets, which is advantageous in transit cost and time. And in fact, we can ship large volumes in a short duration if we need to. But we have challenges. We still continue to need a lot of improvement in the ginning. We need bail identification system and better data management. High moisture content still remains a major concern. The Indian bale packaging is ag again a major concern. We still need to address the branding of Indian cotton, especially in the export markets. Our inland costs still continue to be high. The problem of admixtures makes grading and testing difficult. Mills are compelled to engage in expensive bale management to maintain yarn quality. The contamination, issue, contamination level issue is a twin problem. It's, it gets discounted for the value in the supply chain and the textile industry keeps discounting it to other origins. But I do have a worry. And let's take a closer look. 
And that's the value, the value of the Indian bail. And we have seen the value of the Indian bail erode. So, globally, demands preference increasing for high-grade, machine-picked, contamination-free cotton. The Indian bale has to compete with origins such as US, Brazilian, Australian, and even the West African in the export market. Everybody's perceptions could vary, but over the years, like I mentioned, the Indian bale value has eroded. Basis levels and comparative spreads widening between Indian and other origins. I did a bit of an analysis which I believe reflected the value of, of Indian cotton a few years ago and what the values are now. And you can clearly see how the spreads have been widening. Of course, each spinner would say something different, but th these are just based on a lot of feedback that we get from various consuming markets. So if you classically see West African, which was the closest to the Indian until a few years ago, used to trade at par with the West African. A lot of mills used to turn around and say that the value is pretty good. Today, the discount are cotton by almost two to four cents, depending on whom you speak to. And even as the Indian textile industry is maturing, we are seeing a shift by Indian mills paying similar premiums to our origins during their buying decisions similar to what we see in the export market. Other origins are working hard to improve fiber characteristics, and unfortunately, we seem to be going backward in our parameters. And finally, the issues plaguing us 10 years ago continue to still haunt us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Shah, for sharing the presentation with us. May I now invite Atul Ganatra, President, Cotton Association of India, to come on stage and present the Suvin Ratna to Mr. Shah. The Cotton Association of India has a crop committee of 32 members representing all cotton regions of India. I'm pleased to read all the names of 32 members. Atul Ganatra, Chairman, Bhupinder Singh Rajpal, Vice Chairman representing Maharashtra, Vinay Kotak representing Maharashtra, Arun Seksaria representing Maharashtra, Atul Kala, CCI representing Maharashtra, Manish Shah, representing Maharashtra, Ajay Dalal, representing Gujarat, Arun Dalal, representing Gujarat, Ashok Varma, representing Karnataka, Ravinder Reddy, representing Telangana, Kakirara Ramesh, representing Telangana, Manjeet Singh Chavla, representing Madhya Pradesh, Samir Mantri, representing Maharashtra, Rintu Pandya, representing Maharashtra, Arun Agarwal, representing Urissa, Lalit Lodaya, representing Andhra Pradesh, Amit Sial, Glencoe, representing Maharashtra, Rajesh Dhaiya, representing Maharashtra, Kishore Chheda, representing Gujarat, Samir Lodaya, representing Madhya Pradesh, Shan Sundar Makharia, representing Maharashtra, Udyan Thakkar, representing Maharashtra, Shirish Shah, representing Maharashtra, Pankaj Sharda, representing Punjab and Haryana, Ashok Daga, representing Tamil Nadu, Mahesh Thakkar, representing Gujarat, Anil Thandi, representing Maharashtra, S.K. Somani, representing Rajasthan, Raja Gokul Gandhi, representing Gujarat, Dheeraj Khetan, representing Telangana, and Shanti Lal Oswal, representing Karnataka. 
May I now request Atul Ganatra, President, Cotton Association of India, to come and share the most awaited Indian crop estimates and the latest balance sheet of 2018 and 19 with us. My dear cotton friends, I am here to give you the crop reports and balance sheet of 2018-2019. Friends, all of you are aware, last year India's crop size was 365 lakh bales, that is 36.5 million bales of 170 kg for the season 2017-2018. This year, Indian cotton sowing has taken place in around 123 lakh hectares. But unfortunately, the rain has not supported. And in September month, rain was very less. And in entire October month, there was absolutely dry. Particularly, state like Gujarat has rain deficit of 28%. At the same time, there was a rain deficit in state like Karnataka, Telangana, and Maharashtra also. Due to shortage of rain this year, there will be a no third and fourth picking in most of these cotton growing states. In regular course in India, farmers take